Hey everyone, uh, I see a bunch of people are joining. We'll get started in a couple minutes. I'm just gonna give everyone a few minutes to, to trickle in and join us. And then we'll go over some housekeeping details. Um, we'll make some introductions and we will then be on our way. Um, I'm gonna do a quick introduction. My name is Christina Wong. Um, I'm the Senior Director of Cloud Marketing here at EDB. And I'm gonna be your moderator today for this Lunch and Learn. Welcome everyone. We're really delighted to have you with us. I'm gonna introduce David and Sergio shortly, but before that, um, I'd like to kind of review a few housekeeping items just to help make sure that our Lunch and Learn today goes really smoothly. First off, uh, we are presenting today and um, you know, we're not presenting, we're, sorry, we're answering questions today and it will be recorded. So. You know, for anyone who you know, wants to review this later, um, the recording will be shared out along with like the couple of slides that we have after the uh, lunch and learn. And your lines are gonna be muted by default, but you, know, you have the ability to raise your hand. I saw someone did raise their hand. I don't know if it was on purpose or by accident. And you can come off of mute and ask us a question um, if you have questions. If you do have any you know, technical issues or anything that um, you know, you're struggling with, with the interface, feel, feel, please, please feel free to chat it and our, um, our support, our support team will come help you and, and do our best to debug whatever situation you're, you're going through. Sometimes it's better also to just close down Zoom, come back in, um, but hopefully it'll be a smooth experience for everyone. Um, we highly encourage you if, uh, you know, this is a lunch and learn, so this is supposed to be an interactive session. We're here to answer your questions. Hopefully you all had some questions that you submitted um, when you signed up for this session. And uh, if you can go on video and hang out with us while you eat your lunch, uh, we would love to, you know, kind of have a lively discussion. So this is supposed to be interactive and really the whole point of this is to get your questions answered and to kind of, talk about what, whatever's on your mind when it comes to fully manage Postgres. So I'm gonna get started. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I, uh, I just have a couple of slides to help with the introductions and then, and then we'll go into the questions themselves. So let me share my screen. Can everyone see my screen here? Yeah? Great. Yes. Okay. So as I mentioned today, we're here for a lunch and learn. Um, you know, this is not a presentation. It's not a webinar. Uh, it is a discussion. You, you, you know, you guys all like had questions that you probably submitted when you signed up. And really we're here to talk about your projects, fully managed Postgres, and how you can use um, fully managed Postgres solutions to help gain business agility and agility for your applications. We're gonna, I'm just gonna quickly talk about some trends that are happening in the market today. I'm gonna introduce the speakers and then we're just gonna just get into answering questions. So it should be really quick. We do know that uh, the spend of databases has doubled since 2017 and 50% of that cloud spend is coming from databases. Uh, and when we talk about cloud, right? And, and especially fully managed services, it's really driving business innovation and digital, digital transformation. And the reason for that is because when you can offload the work, the maintenance and the updates and um, kind of the routine work that's not core to your business onto somebody else, like a provider, uh, you don't have to do it yourself and you can then focus on things that are core to your business. And when it comes to open source databases, Postgres is extremely popular and it is leading um, database adoption. 
it is if you look at you know all the different rankings and whatnot postgres is extremely um highly adopted and highly sought after so you know when it comes to flexibility for your applications for your business when it comes to trying to achieve those goals and move faster postgres is a very popular option so fully managed postgres is kind of like icing on the cake so again i'm christina wong i'm the senior director for cloud marketing here at edb um, and i'm gonna you know introduce have let let david and sergio introduce themselves uh, Sergio, would you like to kind of give yourself a quick introduction? Yes, thank you, Christina. I'm uh, Sergio Romero. I'm based in Paris. Uh, I'm currently working at uh, EDB as senior sales engineer. Um, I'm, I help companies to, to build high availability database solutions. You know, um, I have more than uh, 25 years experience in IT, development, database administration, uh, solution architect, and, and pre-sales. And uh, yes, uh, having previously worked uh, for Quest, Oracle, and BNP Paribas, and other companies, uh, I, I've been uh, responsible for delivering a major IT projects uh, for a wide uh, range of organizations. So nice to meet you, everyone, and um, thank you for coming to this uh, to this webinar. David, thank you, Sergio. Uh, so my name is David Sanger. Uh, I'm the UK and Ireland account manager here at EDB. I've been with the company for two years uh, and been witness to some significant transformations that organizations have taken. I'm really excited to be given this chance to do some Q&A with you all uh, and go through a big animal and see how we can help you with your journey. Awesome. Thank you both. Um, so remember, this is an interactive discussion. Raise your hand, submit your questions in chat. Feel free to turn on your camera if you're comfortable doing so. Um, we're here to talk. We're going to go through some of the questions that you all submitted to us. Um, but any additional questions that come up, follow through, comments, you know, please, you know, send them over. Um, you guys are probably working on projects of your own and every project is going to be different. It has a different use case, right? And we would love to hear what those use cases are, what the special considerations are, um, you know, why Postgres is, you know, the, the database that you're looking at. Um, and any questions that we don't have time to get to today, we will follow up on. So that's it for slides. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I can find the sh stop sharing button. And uh, we're gonna start going through some questions. Of course, I have to find where I put the questions. <laughs> Hold on one second. Um, I mean, I have too many tabs open. And uh, let me find the questions, sorry guys. Okay, so we had a lot of questions about um, things like high availability, replication, backup, um, Oracle migration, cloud providers, optimizing. Uh, so, you know, we're going to hit on all these different topics. Um, so, you know, one of the top questions we got is about Oracle. And so we had uh, uh, a person named Anish pose a question. Um, and this person needs to understand more on EDB's high availability replication and backup. Um, and additionally, Oracle to EDB migration tools. Uh, so who would like to take that question? Well, I'll, I'm happy to jump in. I think, um, I'll, I'll, Sergio, I'll defer to you when it comes to you know, the functionality. But in terms of capability, that's something certainly EDB can help with. Um, we. You know, we understand that out there, there's a lot of people looking to do this, to make this move, to move away from Oracle. Uh, and so what we've got available for a lot of people is a free to use uh, migration portal, uh, readily available on our website. Um, if you haven't seen it, um, please give it a go if you are interested. It's a very easy exercise by simply taking a schema that you have, pumping it into our portal, and you'll get a summary of how compatible that schema will be with EPAS, our advanced server, our Oracle compatibility layer. And very quickly, that summary is going to give you an idea of what you can do, you know, the, the art of the impossible. How can you get off Oracle? And you'll know very quickly, can you do it? It's a report you can use, you know, to your leadership to say, hey, look, we can actually do this. We can actually save a significant amount with X being a number that we can work with you on to see what that looks like. But you'll know that you can actually do this. And that's a very powerful portal. In fact, at this stage, 
ready to use, it's free, that summary is just a short stop because it's a very high number that you can achieve, but then there's more to take on board. Uh, Sergio can probably uh, add to that in terms of extra features and capabilities that we provide. Um, Sergio, if you could. Yeah, yes, of course. Uh, with Migration Portal, we can migrate Oracle databases to Postgres. It's very easy to import uh, the schemas from Oracle to, to the Migration Portal. And Migration Portal will analyze uh, what is the percentage of compatibility of your Oracle database with uh, with IPAS, ADB Postgres Advanced Server. So um, if you have any uh, any object that is not compatible, you can modify inside of the, of, of the Migration Portal, in the Migration Portal, and you can reassess the, 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 the code to analyze online the, your code and check uh, what is the compatibility with uh, with APAS. It's a very useful portal. Uh, if you are interested, uh, we can do a, a demonstration uh, of the day. Contact us and uh, with pleasure, we'll be more than happy to, to, to show you how it works. So it's, uh, and this is the, the, the migration portal tool. We have another tool to migrate data. Okay, the, the, the tool is called a Migration Toolkit. A Migration Toolkit allows you to migrate data and schema to, if necessary, from Oracle to Postgres. So you can you can migrate little by little your schemas, your Oracle schemas, or you can migrate everything at the same time, uh, parallelizing the Migration Toolkit tool. And uh, yes, it's a, it's a very powerful tool to, to migrate Oracle databases to, to EPAS. So, so one thing I'd like the two of you to talk about is that, you know, there's the migration tools, right? And this is something that I, I've been at EDB since August. So, so this is something that I've learned, right, over my time here. There's the migration tools, but then there's the, the native Oracle compatibility within EPAS itself, right? So my understanding is that um, you might not need to migrate as much as you might otherwise, because there is native compatibility within the product itself. And I also understand that there are some customers who actually continue to write um, in Oracle code and basically do everything as they did before they moved off of Oracle and it just now works with EPAS. Is that true? And can you tell me more about that? That's true. So the PIL SQL code uh, written in, in Oracle, you can copy and paste the code in EPAS in the Postgres databases. So why? Because the compatibility has been activated in, 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 in EPAS. You don't need to convert or translate your PIL SQL code into PIL PG SQL code. Okay, the, the store procedures can work uh, very easily in, 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 in EPAS. So that, that's all. You, you take your store procedures, your packages, your triggers, your views, and you can translate, uh, you, you, can tra um, you can move your code directly in, in, in the Postgres databases. It's very easy. So once you have moved your, your, your code, uh, you can move your data. With Migration Toolkit, you can migrate uh, everything uh, uh, very fast and very easy. That's awesome. Do, you got, do either of you have any kind of customer stories or use cases you can share where um, the customer was able to take advantage of this? Maybe. Yeah, no, I can certainly add to one. Um, there was a client that I had last year who migrated from Oracle. In fact, they came to us um, with the use case, which I think a lot of people are familiar with in lockdown in COVID times, whereby their focus, look, we need to reduce our costs and we need to keep headcount. We need to save, preserve wages here and lives. These are the people's livelihoods. So they came to us saying that we're spending X amount on Oracle. We need to make a move. We'd actually had conversation with them a year before that. So there was a proposal. We knew what we needed to do. They know what they needed to do. So we were ready to move quickly and execute on a, an agreed sort of proposal that would get them off Oracle and onto EPAS. And we did just that. Uh, and that's allowed them to save a significant amount um, on, on cost. But, you know, the crucial factor for them is keeping jobs alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another important point is that you can move from Oracle to Postgres on-prem and on in the cloud. Big Animal is compatible with this compatibility. So just uh, you have to, to, to select Oracle compatibility, EPAS, EDB Postgres Advanced Server, and uh, you can have uh, Oracle compatible databases on, on the cloud in our Big Animal platform. So it's very, yeah, very my, my understanding is that if you want to continue basically using Oracle applications, writing in Oracle code, you know, um, kind of doing everything that you did before Oracle, but in the cloud as a fully managed service, the only other option out there is with Oracle itself, right? 
Um, I don't think any other vendor actually offers an option um, that helps you escape from Oracle, right? Other than EDB at this moment in time, at least. No, correct. There, there, there will be um, there probably organization. Will. There will be organization, organizations out there that, that, that say they can. But what you need to look at is that level of assessment that they can actually do, which is why our migration portal, we show you quickly and upfront what you can achieve. Mm. I would suggest, you know, if, if you can get a similar exercise out of somebody else claiming to do the same thing, compare like for like, but also ask, you know, the crucial thing is time. How much time will it take? to get the job done. And then you'll have a very good and comparable answer on what can be done and what can't be done and when. Right, right. Now, okay, so here's a question posed by uh, someone in the audience, right? D does anyone ever wanna move from Postgres to Oracle? I mean, I don't know if we would ever encounter that, but have you ever encountered that situation? <laughs> Honestly, not sure. I can tell you that when it comes to staff we've definitely had people move from oracle to edb to work on postgres hey but if, um i can't say i've had staff leave here to go to oracle or even customers that are using postgres <laughs> wanting right. to go to, i can't say on both on both sides i don't think i've ever again i've been here two years i can't honestly say i've had one inquiry about that i would imagine that uh, in once fact actually, actually yeah i'll tell you what i'll tell you what there will be one there was one use case, I've not had anybody say it, but there's a use case, and it's when it's an Oracle application. And when it's an Oracle application, you're tied into an Oracle database. Yeah. And at that point, you're locked in, and there's there's no light at the end of the tunnel anytime soon. <laughs> right, right. I could imagine so, that uh, once you get used to using Postgres, and once you can use it successfully, it'd be a, a really hard sell to move from that to Oracle. <laughs> so, Absolutely. but, and but, you, but you, we'll, you, we'll keep our ears peeled if we hear of a use case like that. We can, we'll, we'll share with the group here. So, um, so then, so yeah, there was a second part to that question, which is um, kind of understanding more on EDB's high availability replication and backup. Can we talk a little bit about um, how we do that with fully managed databases, big animal? I can take call David. Go, ahead. Go on, yeah, I'll add, and if you could jump in, Sergio. We, we're providing a managed service, so we're, we're, we're taking advantage of a lot of features within the chosen cloud vendor, whether that's Azure, AWS, or soon to be GCP. Um, but EDB is releasing very shortly uh, Postgres distributed, our very own high, extreme high availability uh, database. So this is mission critical databases looking to get to uh, five nines, six nines availability, near zero downtime. The, the, the crucial thing for, for organizations is going to be updates and upgrades, keeping on top of these, which we know only too well can take considerable amount of time, but it's also very uh, a very reactive sport. When the upgrade update comes out, you then have to plan and schedule when that com comes in. And then you might have to schedule downtime that all your customers know. What is the impact to the business at that point? You know, commercially, but more importantly, reputation. Are your customers going to be affected? We've got into place functionality that's going to eliminate, eliminate those pains so that you don't have to be concerned about any downtime or uh, impact on reputation. But, uh, Sergio, please, please jump in. No problem. Uh, thank you, David. So one important thing uh, when we are talking about high availability is to have data distributed in several data centers and several availability zones. OK, if one of the data center crash, you will be able to, to, to recover your data or you will be able to access your data and continue with your business without any loss of data. This is something that Big Animal can provide you. So Big Animal in the high availability standard configuration uh, you can have uh, your data your primary database in one availability zone and your, st your st um, standby databases in other uh, availability zones okay with synchronous replication or asynchronous replication to guarantee the rto and rpo uh, objectives so this uh, uh, this is a point that is very very important in uh, when we are talking about high availability and the other point is of course uh, as uh, david said the extreme high availability 
with that bidirectional replication technology that we have created some years ago, we will be able to provide this high stream availability. So stream high availability. So these two points or these two kind of architectures you can already test and you can already uh, use some production. Uh, maybe stream high availability will be available in, in, in some days, but uh, high availability is uh, already available in, with big animal. Of course, if you are not on the cloud, in the cloud, we can provide you with other technologies that we have a uh, high availability or very high availability, depending on the, of the architecture that you want to use. If you are more in an on-premise architecture with a classical architecture, we have tools to, to provide this, uh, this, uh, this high availability. If you are working with Kubernetes, uh, we can provide you also a very high availability uh, with your Postgres databases. We, uh, we have an operator that uh, can manage uh, Postgres databases in, in, in Kubernetes. Uh, this, the, 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 this tool is un unbelievable. Uh, you can create a cluster in some seconds and you can switch over, fill over, backup and recovery. Uh, you can upgrade the minor and major upgrades. Uh, a lot of features that are available today with, uh, with ETB tools. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Um, it looks like we have a few more questions actually coming in about Oracle compatibility. And um, since we just covered that topic, I'm wondering if the two of you would like to kind of respond to some of those if we if we if we know the answer to them. Um, so there was a question coming in about dynamic Oracle queries and that um, Marco has had problems with other migration tools trying to migrate execute immediate or DBMS SQL parse. Um, and so can you can uh, either you speak to dynamic Oracle queries? The there are a lot of packages that are supported today with uh, with EPAS. DBMS uh, SQL is supported today. So I have sent in the in the chat uh, the, the link with all the packages that are supported, the built-in packages. So DB, uh, DBMS uh, SQL is part of the packages that are that are supported. And of course, awesome. uh, the, the 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 SQL. Um, the, let me read again the the, the query. Yeah. Uh, as dynamic uh, Oracle queries are supported too. So why? Because it depends on the query, of course. Uh, if the syntax of the query is supported in EPAS, everything will be supported. If not, we have to change or to do some modifications in the query to, to adapt the query to the compatibility with, uh, with Postgres. But uh, yes, you can test and you can check the building packages that are supported today by, by EPAS. Yeah, Wonderful. I think well, what I'd add to that, a very quick way, migration portal, give it a test, see <laughs> how compatible it can be, see what we can do. Um, what about um, stuff like PL SQL? Um, is it, and the question um, is, is it like for like, or does EDB have limitations compared to Oracle built-in PL SQL functionality? Sorry, can you repeat, please? Um, regarding PL SQL, is it like for like? Is it kind of equivalent function functionality, or does EDB has have limitations compared to Oracle built-in PL SQL functionality? So, so there are some limitations in in PL SQL functionality. Of course, uh, we can. We, the, the idea is not to replace Oracle databases. Okay, the idea is to to migrate Oracle databases to Postgres databases to EPAS. So there are a lot of functionalities that are compatible. So the best uh, the best way to check that is to use migration portal, and you will obtain uh, a, a percentage that will show you what is the percentage of your Oracle database that will be compatible with uh, with EPAS databases. So this is the best way to 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 check. Uh, what is compatible or not in your Oracle databases. Okay. Uh, if, if you check the, the link that I've sent before, you can check all the packages that are compatible. So if you are using, for example, the, the last uh, last month, I had a customer that was using DBMS uh, uh, pump packages, uh, okay? So to do a data pump extraction and import of, of data in Oracle. Of course, we are not to, to, to to recreate this package because we have all the tools that are doing the similar, the similar, the similar yeah. things in 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 Postgres. So yeah, we, we have awesome. to 
we have to find a, a compromise between what is compatible or not and what is the effort that we will do to, to migrate from Oracle to Postgres. Awesome. Um, let's see. Noha has a question about options between Python and Postgres. Can you speak to that? I believe maybe super user access allows you to use Python and Postgres. But Sergio, I'm sure you have more information than I do on that. Uh, I'm not an expert in Python. Uh, I know that uh, <laughs> we can use Python in 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 Postgres and in Apas. So in terms of uh, of grants, uh, I don't know. I cannot. Uh, say <laughs> so it. what but I can right say now, is that we um we did do a super user uh, video demo. Um, you can probably find it on our YouTube channel, and the demo did show um, activating super user um, access to Big Animal. And then it showed our um, cloud uh, CTO at the time um, um, writing, I think, Python code um, against uh, Postgres. So I believe, I believe the answer to that um, is yes, but I, I am not at a technical level that I can provide any um, details. So um, if you go on the YouTube channel and you look up the super user access uh, the demo, um, you, I think you'll probably be able to find uh, kind of that, that, that demo. And I, Sergio, thank you. You just provided a link for a link, uh, uh, yeah, connecting help. Postgres and Python. Yeah. OK, so we have another question. Um, and when it comes to performance and failover testing, uh, do we have any specific tools to test performance and failover with EDB? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's called uh, PEM. Um, it's called a Postgres Enterprise Manager. So this is our performance uh, tuning alerting system uh, designed to combine uh, all resources on Postgres into a single UI. Um, it's one of the things that we do have customers asking for uh, when it comes to Postgres is, can we get a single user interface? And primarily, how can we manage any alerts and notifications? Because sometimes there is nothing in place. There's no way to know if there's a problem or to get ahead of a problem. You know, a lot of organizations as well looking to sync up with their service management tools so they can log incidents and have that central point of view uh, for any P1s, P2s that might come across. Um, so we do have something, PEM, uh, Postgres Enterprise Manager, and that will give you that single pane of glass to manage all the metrics, know exactly what's going on in your Postgres environment and know what action to take. Oh, kind sorry, Christina, I think you're on mute. Sergio, do you have anything to add to that or? Um... Yes, yes, of course, uh, always. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, I just to send a link to, to PEM. Uh, with, uh, with PEM, uh, we have three main features, okay? The first one is to, to capture and monitoring all the statistics uh, from databases and operating system that you are monitoring. The second one may be to the alerting, if uh, if you have any problem in your instance, uh, you can be alert. And the third one is the administration. Uh, you can admin, you can administrate your databases with uh, with PEM uh, software. PEM is based in PG Admin. Uh, we have the chance to, to have Dave Page that has developed PG Admin and and, and, and PEM. He's the project manager of of, of PEM. And uh, and uh, there are a lot of uh, very good features that uh, are included in in PEM uh, in terms of monitoring, in terms of alerting, and in terms of, uh, of administration. For example, in terms of, of, of monitoring, you can catch up all the queries that are executed in a database. You can be alerted if some queries are not uh, running well. Uh, you, can, uh, you can be alert about this, uh, this, uh, uh, these queries, and uh, you can modify the query with PEM uh, because you have the interface to, to do that. So it's a very useful tool that uh, can be installed very easy, and uh, you can include all the all the instances that of your of your uh, platform included in the in, in the PEM platform, the PEM uh, tool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we have another question uh, from uh, let's see, Pedro, um, who submitted before you know, kind of when signing up. And it's what are the main differences um, in the main cloud providers supported for Big Animal? So the main differences in let's see, we have AWS and Azure. Um, in uh, the it, are there differences between the Big Animal experience and what you get with Big Animal between AWS and Azure? Experience, no. You can expect the same experience. Um, if I just take it back, when it comes to the cloud vendor. 
it's naturally a business decision for each customer to take. Where do they want to go? Um, but when it comes to big animal, it's been designed so you can port. You can have portability in the sense that you could be on AWS today and be in Azure tomorrow. I'm sure there's a lot of complexity about making that move uh, generally for customers to go from one to the other. But Postgres, uh, EDB, big animal, it's been designed so that you can move. You can lift and shift if you want to. Um, we, we, we've created it so that there is no lock-in. So you can be there flexible to change, to adapt quickly, um, move quickly, move when you need to as a business, um, giving you that control over what is yours, the data, the database. One thing that is important here with uh, Big Animal is that Big Animal can be deployed everywhere, everywhere. Uh, in uh, Today in two clouds, Amazon and, and Azure, the tomorrow will be uh, also in, in Google Cloud Platform and you will be able to deploy EPAS databases with Oracle compatibility. So you will be, uh, you, you will have the the, 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 uh, the expertise of our support, and uh, you can you can be upgrade uh, your, your database, your progress database can be upgraded very easily because uh, we have uh, we are editor of Postgres, of course, and we can bring the latest version of Postgres in uh, in Big Animal uh, very very easy. So these are the, 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 the main, for me, the main uh, points uh, that uh, that Big Animal has today. Wonderful, thank you. Um, our question from Lewis, is there a technology to optimize queries in Postgres? This, this question is for me, maybe. Yes, Sergio, <laughs> yes. So in... <laughs> In EPAS, uh, we have a, an index advisor. Okay, you can you can benefit of this advisor because uh, a query that uh, need an index uh, can be detected by 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 EPAS, and EPAS can propose you an index for for the query that you are executing. Uh, again, with uh, with uh, PEM, you can track all the queries in a, with a trace, uh, with a trace, you, you, you create a trace for one user and one database, and you can have all the queries in this trace, and you can check if these queries need an index or not. If the query needs an index, PEM can create for you the index, okay? If uh, you are working in a, in a, in a command line uh, platform, uh, EPAS can propose you also an index for your for your queries so the answer is yes this is the first uh, the first thing the second thing is that pem include uh, a, a database advisor to propose you new configurations for 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 your database if you have uh, this or this parameter that is not set up correctly pem will propose you the best configuration for your database. So these two functions, uh, these two features are very useful for, 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 for the users because uh, you can optimize your database very easily when you are using EPAS, EDB Postgres Advanced Server. Wonderful, thank you. Um, I have a question that both of you can answer uh, that was posed by, um, one of our, our attendees ahead of time. However, there was a question that came through the chat, which I think is related. And so the question that was posed ahead, ahead of time was, what are the differences of the Postgres database from other database? What are its advantages and disadvantages? Um, and which fields are Postgres used most often? So I interpret this question as like a use case question. What use cases are really great for Postgres versus other databases? And kind of related, a question came through from our audience today about um, spatial data processing and other geometric calculations. Um, this is from Arno. Uh, so asking about Postgres and its ability to process those types of use cases. So can we just talk about use cases in general, perhaps that one in particular, if you happen to know, um, and you know, what is Postgres good for? Sure, I mean, I'd be happy to jump on that one. Um, so perfect use cases for Postgres is gonna be new applications. Um, Anyone that's looking to you know, develop a whole new app that wants to start at a very cost of a cost effective rate, Postgres community flavor is gonna get you that. It's gonna allow you to take your time, get the application to market uh, and really take advantage of all the, the wealth of extensions that are available. In fact, one of those extensions is uh, post GIS around spatial. Um, another one and which comes into frame here is uh, moving to the cloud. 
uh, being able to use, say, Postgres on-prem today, being able to take it to the cloud, very cost-effective. Um, I'm sure all of you know when it comes to Oracle, it's, it can be very difficult and challenging in terms of cost. Uh, and migrations, again, in similar fashion, go from Oracle to Postgres, it, it can be done. So I'd say of the use cases, you probably are looking at new apps, um, cloud deployments uh, and migrations. Those are some of the key, uh, key areas. Um, when it comes to sort of areas of use for Postgres, we find that he transaction heavy workloads tend to come into play, but it can be any uh, sort of segment. Uh, anybody that's really looking to deploy a database, um, but wants to start at a rate that's not gonna break the bank. Awesome. Sergio, I'm sure you have some additional details that you can provide on this. I have some additional details. Um, one of the major features that uh, we have today is the availability to, to, to run Postgres in, uh, in, in containers. This is not possible with other kind of databases. Uh, I don't want to, to, to say what databases cannot run today in, 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 in containers, but one of the main features today is it's very easy to create a container, it's very easy to create a cluster inside of Kubernetes and, and, and install uh, Postgres or EPAS databases in Kubernetes. Okay, let me just share with you, for all the audience, uh, this uh, this link. Uh, we have a solution to, to deploy clusters uh, with a lot of features that are included in the operator. Uh, for example, high availability, you can choose the number of instances that you want to have in your cluster, um, uh, switch over, failover, uh, rolling updates, uh, minor and major, um, security, login, uh, monitoring, all of these tasks can be today be done by the operator and you can replace your DBAs or you can replace part of the DBAs task that are doing today to administrate your databases for this operator with this operator okay so the idea is to concentrate the, the, the work of the dbas more in the performance task are more in the architecture uh, design more than the uh, more than in the daily task that dbas can perform uh, all all the time you know? so this is one of the of the main uh, things or features that uh, postgres provide today Awesome. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have? Um, we have... Okay, so we received multiple questions um, from the, the uh, um, pre-submitted questions that are asking for a basic overview of best practices and how EDB um, thinks about the role of Postgres with delivering high availability. Um, David, what questions um, are you getting from clients that you talk to and what's top of mind for them with regards to this? And then and, and David and Sergio, what, you know, kind of what advice can you give the audience in terms of best practices and um, delivering higher availability? I know, you know, for example, there are trade-offs, right? When it comes to implementing high availability architectures, uh, you know, on one hand, you get high availability for your application, less downtime. On the other hand, you're you know, running more resources, right? And so there's a cost implication and there's maybe a management implication. Um, so can you kind of talk to best practices, how people choose, what types of questions they ask, how do you respond to them? What, what are you hearing? Sure, uh, I'll, I'll start off, um, you know, and just to provide context, with me being from the account management team, the sales team, I can give you the sort of overview that we look for. And it, it is a case of cost and risk. You know, the, the best practice, and you'll find it in most places, is going to be, say, like a, a three-node cluster, looking at a primary uh, with two standby. Um, with that in mind, you know, as you all know, primary, if it goes down, you've at least got another uh, database to write to, but you need that to at least write to something else as your backup, as your coverage, so that you can take care of primary and bring it back up. So we always recommend a three-node cluster, and in fact, we do provide a, a, a fixed uh, service engagement that allows for that provisioning of an architecture of a primary and two standby. And in terms of either our tools that we provide, which we've you know provided some brief overview for in terms of PEM or failover management, or it could even be open source, we have a fixed engagement that allows for this deployment to take place to provide that best practice. And that's a best practice that's been built on our 15 years plus 
of experience delivering Postgres and these are Postgres projects because that's what we're about. We're about one thing, Postgres. So we know what we're doing there and we have the expertise to deliver. So our guidance would be um, as an initial sort of deployment for high availability would be a, a three to four nines um, availability with a, a primary and two standby. But Sergio will have delivered more of these sort of talks than I, and he can certainly add uh, more context. Yeah, I agree with you, David. Uh, professional service team is uh, we have some packages that are already defined. Uh, we can we can we can deliver these packages uh, like a like a package that is called uh, quick deploy. In the quick deploy package, we can deploy three uh, three instances: one primary and two um, standby, with a backup solution with a monitoring solution and with a replication solution i mean uh, when, when i say the replication it means that we will create a primary database with an stream replication to the standbys synchronous or asynchronous to deliver the maximum of availability to your system depending on the criticity of your system Okay, so RTO, RPO are very, very important for you. So we can deliver this kind of, of packages. Of course, uh, this is uh, in a, in a on-prem technology. If you choose the cloud, all of these deployment are already included in the service. You know, you, 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 you will have a high availability solution that will be maintained and installed by the, by the cloud, by our service, and everything will work uh, fine. And the other solution can be the, 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 the operator, the Kubernetes operator for high availability. The Kubernetes operator will warranty that everything that you will put in a file, that you will write in a file, will be delivered uh, as much as possible. If you write that you want three instances, the operator will always uh, do the work to have these instances uh, available all the time. So yeah, um, other thing that I uh, that, that that I can say is that if you can script everything, do it. Scripting is is the key of of uh, the continuous integration and continuous delivery is the key for for the good platforms. If you are working on premises, of course uh, you, you 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 must integrate everything in 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 your continuous integration and continuous delivery uh, software. So this is something that uh, I can share with you. Can you talk to us about um, switch over from primary to standby? Is it easy? And what about switch back, back to primary? Um, or do you have to rebuild the primary entirely? Um, does BDR do it? Does big animals alone without, you know, kind of the additional high availability aspect do it in and of itself? Um, you know, how easy is it? I mean, I know that there are some solutions where when you switch from primary to standby, then you have to, like you lose your primary, you have to rebuild it completely. Then you have to, you know, put in a huge amount of effort to get back to primary. Um, I think I think in, in Big Enema it might be easier, but please, could you speak to that? Yes, in, in, in Big Animal, uh, the technology that is used in Big Animal is uh, an EDB technology, is Cloud Native PG. So this technology is based in the Kubernetes uh, technology and allow you to create and to, to, to recreate if uh, an, a problem occurs in the, primary, uh, in the primary instance, the technology will recreate the, the, the instance very, very fast and very easy. Why? Because using the Kubernetes uh, APIs and using all this technology that has been uh, already created is very easy. In, in fact, you, you do nothing in your, in your system. It's the operator that will do for you. This is in, in big animal. In, uh, in the Kubernetes technology, in the Kubernetes operator, is the same. The operator will manage uh, all, the, all, this, uh, all this stuff. And one thing that is very important is to know how many times your infrastructure will be down. If you have a data center that crash, of course, if the data center uh, is available uh, very soon, probably you, you will be able to apply the logs that are in the primary database, in the new primary database to the old one. And it is a task that is uh, very it's easy for the, for, the Postgres, uh, for the Postgres DBAs and does not take a lot of time. If your data center crashes for more than X hours, probably you will be able to copy, you will need to copy the entire database to, to, the, 
to the whole cluster. So it depends on the time of your system is, is, is down, and it depends of, of the logs that has been uh, stored in, the, in your primary database to restore the other ones. So. Awesome, thanks. Um, we have some additional questions I'd like to circle back to. Uh, so Christoph had a question about no locking without cloud platform. Um, is it possible, oh, this is a question about distribution across cloud providers. Is it possible for Big Animal to support primary instance in one cloud provider and read replica in another cloud provider? At this moment, no. Uh, I think in the roadmap we'll be will we'll, uh, we'll be able to to do that, but at this right. moment it's not possible. But it's in right, the roadmap right. before the end of the year. Yeah, it is in the uh, strategic vision for Big Animal to be able to yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, not happening this year. Um, however, you know, if like anything, if you have a project that you're working on, a use case, a timeline with that project, um, you certainly should speak to us, and we can have a discussion as to whether it will be available in time for your project or not. Um, it is though in the kind of in strategic vision of what we're looking to do. Um, and, then, and then we have another migration. I'm sorry, Sergio, were you gonna say something? Just, just to say that this technology is already available with uh, Cloud Native PG. Um, we can replicate a cluster to another cluster in different clouds. So if you have a cloud, a cluster in AWS, and you want to replicate this cluster in Azure, you can today. Not with Big Animal, but with the technology that Big Animal is using. So if you are using Kubernetes technologies, it is something that is very, very easy to do. I have prepared also a demo. If uh, the customers are interested, I can show this uh, this demo. If, uh, awesome. So we can do it, not not in Big Animal course. itself, though. Not Got in it. Big Animal itself, but uh, we can yeah. do it uh, with uh, the Kubernetes uh, technologies. And yeah, I, think I think that's... Benefit, yeah. So I was going to say, the benefit is that we know we could do it because right. the Big Animal engine, if you will, is built on the yeah. CMPG. It's built yeah. on the Kubernetes. It's so it's, it's, it's just one of these things where we have to prioritize our roadmap and features that we're bringing to market. There's only uh, so much we can do in a given time, but it's coming, it's coming. Yeah, and I think that's a good point that you're making, David, is that, you know, um, Big Animal, it, it's fully managed, right? So that's different than the other EDB offerings. However, when it comes to the, the features and the functionality and capabilities that we see in um, the existing EDB solutions, a lot of what we do with Big Animal is we try to keep that experience the same. So no matter if you're using the on-premises version, the cloud native Postgres version, or Big Animal, um, the Postgres experience and you know how you use it should be very, very similar, if not the exact same. We're using a lot of the same technologies, the things that we learn in the other products in Big Animal. And it's just a matter of getting it over there. So. Um, so that you're not like doing something completely different, especially if you want to start moving, you know, from on-premises to the cloud um, to fully managed back again or whatever else. Um, so while we're on the topic of migration, circling back to that topic, can you talk a bit about migration from SQL server databases or other databases to uh, Big Animal or to other EDB Postgres um, offerings? You guys are frozen for me. Did you hear the question? No, not me. Oh, sorry. No, if you could repeat. That's yeah. okay. So the migra migration from SQL Server or other databases to Postgres, to EDB's Postgres offerings. So to, today we can we can migrate from SQL Server to, to Postgres, but just the data, not the code. The code, the Transat uh, SQL is not... Uh, is not compatible with uh, PLPG SQL, and we have not developed uh, a, a, a module or a, a code to, to translate from Transat SQL to, to, to Postgres. It is only possible with Oracle. But, but if your database is in SQL Server and you don't have a lot of Transat SQL, you can migrate the structure and the data with migration toolkit. So this is the positive thing. Uh, and the code uh, you 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 will need to 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 translate yourself because we we have not the expertise to to do this kind of of of, of things. 
maybe if, if we talk with the professional service team they will be able to do something but uh, we, we need to discuss with the professional team and we need to study case by case yeah awesome thank you yeah. um and can either of you speak to postgres performance numbers on um on various servers so um this doesn't sound like it's specifically a cloud question um but the question is about a specific bare metal server so i guess any given bare metal server um postgres performance i'm i'm seeing the question of uh, jagat mm -hmm. about uh, the same configuration with memory with uh, a number of inserts uh, inserted in the database we have to check we have to check the configuration the operating mm -hmm. system uh, all of things uh, can be can be done to improve the performance in terms of operating system and database configuration first um uh, yes we have a, a lot of parameters in the database that can be optimized if you have uh, more technical details you can you can ask us and we can check with you what is your needs uh, what is your use case what is the the, the performance expected for your for your for your application etc cetera, etc cetera. we can talk a little bit and uh, and see what is your your yeah it is really use case dependent yeah. right because everyone's going to have different hardware different yeah. application demands different networking situations different yeah. security situations, right so that's probably more of a specific type of conversation and yeah um, so yeah, Geth, if you have a specific project and there's, it has requirements that you want to check to see if Postgres would be a good fit for, pl please reach out and we'd be happy to, you know, yeah. kind of because one-on-one -on -one conversation. Of course, because if you cannot reach the, 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 your expectations in terms of performance, why not to split the, the, the why not to, to, to split your, your uh, workload in different servers is something that we can probably do too. So we can to speak, uh, we can speak together and, and chat together and, uh, and check what is the best uh, option for you. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so another question is about Postgres add-ons or extensions, right? And can you speak to a bit about, uh, you know, like limitations or not? that apply for using Postgres add-ons in the cloud with Big Animal? Good question. <laughs> um, I think that there, there are several extensions that are by default in, in Big Animal, uh, but I cannot tell We've you more coming. right now. Yeah. We've more coming, yeah. A little more coming, OK. Yeah. OK. I, um, yeah, I cannot, the, the, the question, I'm, I can, we can answer you. Usual. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So my understanding is that we do support several extensions. There are more coming. And I believe that in the docs, there is a list of the ones that we support. And I think that one of the important takeaways is that because we are so close, EDB is so close to Postgres, the code, and we have so many committers that are and contributors are really involved with Postgres, that when we have a customer with a use case that needs a certain type of extension or whatnot, um, we can respond fairly quickly to those to those requests. I mean, this is kind of something that we would apply to, I think, any roadmap request, right? Our ability to build things that are specific for Postgres, adjust, or even fix bugs, right? Um, we're able to do it at an accelerated pace because we are so close to the project, but it applies to extensions as well. However, I do know that, on good faith, that um, there are some immediate roadmap items that are related to extensions. And you'll see um, a lot more of those extensions coming online for Big Animal very shortly in the next you know, quarter or two or so. Um, so we're getting at like four minutes left to our session. I'm going to try to answer a couple more questions, and then we'll do a little bit of wrap up. Um, so question is, how does EDB handle storage of the database? Is it fully safe without any risk of data loss? So several points and several things uh, here uh, concerning the storage. Um, it depends of the cloud, okay? And it depends of the cloud uh, that you have choose. For example, if you choose uh, Azure, all the uh, all the data will be uh, will be stored in Azure Blob Storage. If you choose AWS, uh, the data will be uh, will be stored in Simple Storage Service. 
uh, this is for the for the data that are stored in the database concerning the backups the backups uh, will be also stored outside of the of the of the uh, of the database of course so we have several services azure manage disk azure blob storage elastic blocks storage and simple storage services so one advantage about that of this future is that you can do a point in time recovery if you have a crash with your data you can do a point in time recovery so imagine that you are working with a table and a user drop the table uh, you can recover the data just uh, before to drop the table so this is a feature that uh, has been uh, implemented in in, in big animal and this uh, this feature is very useful for, for some of the of, of the users um, another thing that you can do is a pg dump if you want to extract the data uh, outside of your cloud you can execute a pg dump and extract all the data in uh, and store that in another volume this is something that, uh, that you can do Awesome. Thanks, Sergio. Guys, we're running out of time. However, I would love um, to kind of make some closing statements, if you will. And also, I know that there are some questions that we haven't got to. Um, and so, you know, we will be following up with you after. However, one question that I have for you is that um, the audience is that I would love for you to raise your hand if you like this format. This is the first time we're doing this. We admit it. First time that we're doing this Lunch and Learn. And we really wanted to have an opportunity to get people's questions and answer them in a really direct and kind of uh, informal um, kind of approach. And if you like this format, we will do more of them. So feel free to you know, raise your hand or hand or provide a comment or contact us after if you liked this and if you'd like to see more of these types of um, lunch and learn sessions. Also, um, I, I would be remiss to not say that Big Animal does have a 14 day free trial. Um, it's a test drive. So it's kind of like a taste of Big Animal. You don't need a cloud account. Uh, you can just go in and spin up a cluster, connect an application, try a few things. And um, if you have a specific project that you'd like to test Big Animal for, evaluate Big Animal for, we do offer a 30 day zero cost subscription. This comes with um, working directly with EDD, our customer success team. It does come and you deploy it in your account. So you start setting up your specific application with your account with Big Animal to, to try it out. It is definitely you know, more involved, but it really gets you the full Big Animal experience for the real life use case that you have. And so um, those are two options to try Big Animal, one for just a quick try, the other one for you know kind of against the project that you have in mind. Um, of course, um, EDB is not just a big animal, even though I would like to think so sometimes. EDB has on-premises solutions. We have um, Cloud Native Postgres. We have a lot of other things. And there were a lot of questions that were about Postgres in general. So if you do sign up for an EDB account, you can get access to all our educational resources. You can try out all the other EDB products. There's downloads and whatnot in there. Um, and lastly, you know, we are available and very happy to answer questions at any time. You can reach out to us um, at the email address, or um, I know that you probably got your invitation from Bari, who you know, has been helping provide support during the session. You can respond to her and she'll pass the question along. Um, and so I wanna thank you for your time today and thank you for your questions and your interaction. And hopefully we'll do this again soon. Thanks everyone. And thank you, David and Sergio, for you know participating and answering all these questions and providing such great information. Thank you for having us. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.